There are over 10,000 indicators you can add to your chart at any given time. And out of all of those indicators, the single best one on the planet doesn't even try to tell you if price is going long or short. Doesn't even care. Gangster. And I gave it away in the thumbnail. It's the ATR. It's the average true range, which if I were to have... 10,000 traders, guess which one it was going to be. None of them would have picked the ATR. And if you've ever used it, you are very surprised by this answer in terms of what the best Forex indicator uh, on the planet actually is. So let's get right into it, guys. In this video, I'm going to explain how the ATR works and just what it is and what it does, and then why you should be using it 100% of the time. There should not be a single trade that you make without consulting the ATR first. That is why it is the number one trading indicator on the planet, because every single trader on earth should be using it. No other indicator can, I can say that about. Now, I wanted to make this video kind of later, but I pushed this to the front a little bit um, because, as you guys know, a lot of you know, I host something called the Forex Q&A podcast. And what it is, if you're unfamiliar, is listeners will ask me a question. They'll go to nononsenseforex.com slash askvp and I answer them as quickly as I can via email. Now, some of those questions end up making the show. And that's, that's how the show is created, from listeners like you asking me questions. Now, the very first episode I made, episode one, went over the top four questions I already get just on the street, you know, anywhere, out in public, in a bar, you know, acquaintances, uh, that I get when people discover what I do. Just for the purpose of you not having to ask me a question like that, and then you could ask me something different if you wanted to. So I, that was constructive, I think. But what turned out happening is <laughs> once I opened this up for questions, the number one question I got that I probably get over 50% of the time as of right now is, what are the indicators that you use in your algorithm? So people know that I use an algorithm, which is not as daunting as it sounds. It's actually very simple of, let's say, four to six indicators that I follow. And if they all tell me to go long, I go long. If they all tell me to go short, I go short. And that's how I do what I do. And uh, they want to know what they are. You know, screw all this learning how to trade nonsense. Just tell me what you use and I'll just use that and make a bunch of money. The answer is no, every time. Stop asking. <laughs> There's no way I'm giving my algorithm away to anybody. It took three blown accounts, thousands of hours coming home and testing all these goofy indicators with, on all different settings, on all different time frames, on all different currency pairs to get to the combination I have right now. And if you think I'm just going to give it away to you because you asked, yeah, you're insane. Uh, you're bold. And I do commend you for this. Hey, I'm not mad at you for asking this question. Fortune favors the bold. Nothing favors the timid. So uh, good on you for being bold. But uh, if you think you're getting any piece of this, you're wrong. Until today, I didn't even realize that the ATR was a piece of this algorithm. Um, and, and I'll explain why in a minute. But uh, it is something I use on every single trade. I just, for some reason, didn't count it as part of what's on my chart. But you'll understand why in a moment. First off, let's just really quickly go over what an algorithm is because I want all of you over time to have one for yourself. Like I said, it's not mathy. It's, it's not, it has nothing to do with algebra. I suck at both. I really, really suck at algebra. It's just a series of things, by definition, that must be true or untrue before something actually happens. So in a trading sense, for me, it's a series of indicators that actually must all agree with each other. Every single one must say, hey, VP, on this currency pair, it is time to go long or it is time to go short. If even one of them is indecisive or tells me to go the other way, then I do nothing. I move on. I don't have to trade all the time. Now, as far as how I set up my algorithm, uh, the indicators within it, really, it's uh, all of them attempt to avoid trading where the big banks trade. You know, if you've seen my videos before, you understand this, how important it is to stay unpopular and to avoid those hot spots where e everybody else is putting in orders because that's where the big banks like to take things the opposite way of where you intended. This is how losses happen for most people. 
And uh, But all things considered, even though I'm staying unpopular, I still want them to get me in and out of a trade at the best possible times. But before any of that happens, I actually have to know how much to risk first. That's why I have to consult the ATR. And the reason this whole time I forgot it was part of my algorithm is because I already have X amount of indicators on my chart as is. I don't really want to add one more. So I just pretty much put it on my chart just to see where the number's at, and then I immediately take it off. But it is absolutely part of my trading system and technically part of my algorithm and is the only piece of it I am willing to divulge. Uh, but it is the most important piece uh, because it is the most important indicator out there. Because understand, everybody wants that one indicator, that one standalone indicator that is just amazing at predicting where price will go. And that indicator doesn't exist. You need a combination of indicators that confirm each other. So you can really drill down in those absolute best times to go long or go short. But the ATR, what makes it the best, it's the because it is the one indicator everyone should be using. I've said it before, guys. That is what makes it the best because this here does not exist. This here absolutely does, and everybody needs to use it. Now, this is not the answer people want to hear because there is nothing sexy about this indicator. Everybody chases the sexy stuff. This is dead unsexy. Nobody wants to hear about it. They want the indicator that gets them into that big trend early or calls that perfect reversal. You know, they have no time for something that does not do either one of those things. We will get off of this picture. <laughs> um, but the ATR is crucial for money management, and money management is crucial to winning. If you guys have not seen the money management video I made, it's just a very short video kind of kicking off the money management playlist um, that this video is also going to be on. Go watch it. It is the one thing most responsible for your trading account going up or going down. And the ATR is the most important indicator when it comes to money management. Yet another reason why this thing is so important and why it is at the very, very top of my list. So let's go ahead and talk about it and tell you what it is. It's about time to do that, huh? The average true range. All it does is tell you how many pips a particular currency pair has moved on average in the past X amount of candles. So the default settings for the ATR on most platforms is 14. So in the past 14 candles, on average, from top to bottom, how many pips does this thing move? That's it. The end. All right, and so I'm going to go to my charts in a second here. I'm going to show you how to set it up and a little more about it. Before I do that, though, here's the way I describe trade entries in terms of how much money to put on a trade. Okay, I don't, I don't speak in units. I don't say put 10,000 units on the euro dollar to go long. I don't say that. I don't say it in dollar amounts either. I don't say put 4,500 on the pound kiwi to do this. Oh, I. I don't. I say, how much are you trading per pip? What is your pip value? To me, that's the best way to speak in money management terms. And that's from this point forward. That's how you're going to hear me talk. So uh, I don't speak in lots either, because a lot on uh, one lot on the euro dollar is right now is ten dollars a pip. Um, but if you're going to trade the euro pound, for example, which is one of the charts we're going to look at, one lot does not equal ten dollars a pip. So what I really care about in terms of how to determine how much risk to put on any given trade, I will say how much money per pip are you trading? What is your pip value? All right. So now that that is clear, let's go ahead and go to the charts and I'll show you the ATR. All right. So here we are at the euro pound. And I use this one as a good example because it moved, typically moves very slow compared to most currency pairs. So I also have waited to the very end of the day. This is the end of the trading week, so nothing is moving. Now for you, you are going to want an average of, let's just say, 14 candles. You want 14 completed candles. So if you are a daily chart trader like I am, and in episode three of the podcast, I explain why. You either want to wait until the end of the trading week, if it's a Friday, but if it's any other day of the week, you want to measure the ATR about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes before the candle's about to close. Now, why do I say that? Because if you don't, if you wait till an hour after 
the candle before is closed, this candle is going to be very small, and it's going to throw off the equation. All right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, maybe it'll make more sense if we actually pull it up here. So average true range. Now, the ATR comes standard on just about every MT4 platform out there, so I don't need to provide a download link, really. And what I do, I leave it alone. Some of the best indicators out there you don't even need to mess with. I do 14 periods. I just keep the same colors and lines and just hit OK. And there it is. And so what is the ATR of the euro pound? Can anybody tell me? It's right here. 41 pips. This line just tells you over time what it has been. You can really just ignore the line. What I want to know is this number right here. And that is it. 41 pips. From top to bottom in the last 14 candles, this has been the average. Now, if I were to do this, you know, let's say during the Asian session where things have just kind of gotten going and things haven't been moving too much, this number is going to be lower because this candle is going to be a lot smaller because it hasn't had the chance to really do what it's going to do for the day. So you're not going to get the most accurate number here. That's why I recommend checking this thing right before the end of the day. Or if it's the weekend, you can just do what I do and check it on the weekend. So 41 is your number there. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's move on to something that moves a lot faster, the pound kiwi. Now, same thing. Hit OK. And you can see on this one, it moves a lot more than the euro pound does, doesn't it? 125 pips per day if we're counting the last 14 periods. And this is a slow time of year, guys. This thing can easily trade into the 200s, sometimes the 300s, depending on what's going on. And out of the eight major currency pairs, this is typically the fastest one, and the euro pound is typically the slowest one. And so this is a good illustration, I think, in, in terms of comparing the two and how the ATR can help you determine what your pip value needs to be for each one. So let's go back to the slide, and I'll show you how this works. So let's compare the two. The ATR of the euro pound we determined was 41. On the pound kiwi, it was 125. Now, I am terrible at math, but I can tell you right now that one is about three times more than the other one is. So what do we do? We understand first that currently the euro pound is moving about a third of the speed of the pound kiwi. And conversely, the pound kiwi is moving about three times the amount of the euro pound. All right, we've established that, right? So how do we trade it? Well, pretty simple. Just for example, if you're trading the euro pound at $6 a pip, you can, with confidence and with ease, trade the pound kiwi. All you have to do is trade a third less. If you're putting $6 a pip here, you put $2 a pip here and your results are going to be very similar. It seems pretty obvious to me, but the vast, vast majority of traders, I can guarantee you, are putting the same amount per pip over here than they are over here. A lot of you who are watching this video for the first time, that's what you probably do. That is your answer to money management. My question to you is, what are you doing? Why are you doing it that way? Are you sitting there telling me, that you are three times as confident in this trade than you are this trade. Because whether or not you're actually saying it, that's what your actions are saying. This is a very foolish and irresponsible way to trade. Because if this trade goes south on you, that's going to be a really big dent in your account. And you should never let one loss affect your account that adversely. Guys, don't be one of these people do it right and you do it right by using the ATR to determine numbers like this and then you can decide how much money actually goes where. I know I keep referring back to the podcast because it's actually very relevant for this video but episode four I talked about the reason why you should be trading a lot more currency pairs than you probably do and I think one of the big reasons why people don't is because pairs like this seem very ominous very scary because they move so much. Uh, there's really no reason to feel that way because if you just put the right amount of pip value onto it, then it's just like trading anything else. And this opens up your trading repertoire so much more because now you're giving yourself that much more opportunity to succeed, to make money, to where you are severely limiting yourself if you only trade a small handful of currencies. 
This is how you open things up. This is how you multiply your success. But only if you do it the right way. If you do it the wrong way, it can be the worst thing to ever happen to you. But by using the ATR and using it the right way, you can trade any pair out there you want with ease. So, in conclusion, first off, understand that money management is the one thing that's going to separate you from the losing traders when it's all said and done because it is the one thing, more than anything, that determines whether your bank account goes up or down. And what's the most important tool you need when it comes to money management? It's the ATR, and you should have it either on your chart or ready to go, ready, ready to tell you what the ATR is for a certain pair, always, 100% of the time, never, ever trade without it. It is that important, guys. Now, who else out there is drilling down into Forex money management like I am? Nobody. Uh, it's only the most important thing ever, and people are doing you a gigantic disservice by not talking about it more. And so if you really do want to succeed, you know what to do you got to subscribe to this channel. We are just getting started in terms of everything. Yes, we're also going to go over entries and how to get the best entries too, the really good sexy stuff. That's all going to be there. Um, but money management is something we really need to get you ironclad, no doubt in anyone's mind, amazing at. Because if we do this, the rest is easy. So hit subscribe. Hit the bell. Don't miss anything. Check out the podcast. Check out NoNonsenseForex.com. It has everything, the videos, the podcast, the blog, all of it. But follow a YouTube channel that is dedicated to your success. Put it all together, and let's go get it.